Welcome and thanks to everyone joining us today. My name is Michelle Cloutier and as the Vice President for Enrollment Management at Bryant University, it's my great pleasure to serve as the host and moderator for today's panel. On behalf of all of the faculty and staff colleagues at Bryant, please know that the entire Bryant community continues to work very hard to keep our community healthy and so that we can benefit from a full fall semester on campus. We're all in this together and proud of completing our first month with students back at Bryant and enjoying the classroom and residential experience. Our goal for today's panel is to explore how we can keep this successful reopening going. Our leadership team has plans in place and we are listening closely and learning all of the time as we refine our plans. We also have some suggestions and questions from students that were submitted through registration and we'll be addressing those today. Before we begin our discussion, I want to provide an overview of this afternoon's program. President Cattell will speak first and he'll be sharing a behind the scenes look at some of the data he uses to guide Bryant's testing strategy. From there, our Vice President for Student Affairs, Dr. Inger Lees Amir and Provost Gunsel Macy will share their observations on what we are doing really well with and where there are areas we need to stay vigilant or look to improve on. We'll have about 20 minutes at the end to address student questions before we wrap up. So, President Cattell. Okay, thank you very much, Michelle. Uh, and thank you uh, for the students who are joining us um, uh, this afternoon. I know all of you are busy uh, with your uh, uh, schoolwork and uh, it is a Friday, but I know you have classes tomorrow uh, too. So uh, I'm sure some of you are preparing for classes uh, tomorrow. But thank you uh, for joining us. And first, I'd like to take a minute uh, to acknowledge uh, what an important day uh, September 11th is, 9-11 uh, uh, in our nation's history. Um, I know a lot of you were uh, just recently born, uh, but I'm sure uh, you and your families uh, are very well informed about the day and, and you know its role in our history. And uh, since sunrise, our flags on campus uh, have been flying at half mast to recognize uh, the solemn day and to reflect uh, on this day. Uh, I could say I, I grew up in New York City. Uh, uh, you know, you're probably uh, dating myself, but when I was walking to high school, uh, uh, I would look up and uh, the World Trade Center towers, the Twin Towers were actually uh, being built at that point in time. And so they were very significant uh, to me growing up. Uh, and that dev devastating terrorist attack on New York City that 19 years ago had a profound impact uh, on our nation uh, and on me. And uh, we should never forget, I will never forget uh, that day. But we should uh, think about 9-11 in the context of our current uh, crisis related to the global pandemic and understand that after 9-11, our country came back, uh, came back strong from that experience. And I believe working together, like we're working together on this campus this year, working together, our nation uh, and all of you could help us come back to the challenges of this pandemic also. So please uh, take some time today to you know, sort of think of a historical perspective about this day, 9-11. Uh, you know, take a look at the flag, stay under the flag at half mast and understand that we've been through crises before and we're a resilient nation. and. Uh, you're going to be resilient uh, uh, with the benefits of a Bryant education. So I just wanted to reflect uh, on that in this moment in time and on this day, September 11th. Uh, I've been president now uh, for about 10 weeks. Uh, and uh, it's an understatement to say that uh, myself and the leadership team have been very busy during that time. And we've learned a lot uh, working together. I've learned a lot uh, and kind of me personally, um, I had uh, been familiar with Brian and its, uh, its strengths uh, and some of the opportunities here. And I, I really truly didn't understand uh, how important uh, and what a strength our students are at Brian. Uh, and I'm sure that you could uh, uh, help me learn even more. And part of this session today is to you know, work with you to try to understand how we could continue to keep this campus uh, safe and healthy uh, during this semester. Uh, we have a great leadership team uh, here uh, at Bryant University. Uh, uh, Michelle is part of it, uh, Inga and Glenn, essential roles and a very strong leadership team. 
uh, focused on student, student success, uh, you know, from day one uh, when you enter as freshman or even before day one, uh, because uh, thanks to the work of Michelle and her team in particular uh, on the before day one uh, aspects. But total leadership team, you know, we're here for your uh, education, for your develop professional uh, career and personal development and uh, for your success. And this semester also really focus on keeping the campus uh, open to keeping it uh, safe and healthy. And as Michelle uh, kind of introduced me, we're gonna kind of take you uh, behind the scenes here a little bit uh, into the data that we look at as a team. I look at uh, every day, you know, we use uh, timely information to understand where we're at as a university uh, from uh, uh, a uh, health and safety perspective. And uh, we could see from the data, as I'll review with you, uh, what a great job uh, our students and the full campus are done to keep this uh, campus uh, safe and healthy. Uh, the very low positivity uh, test rates from the, uh, the COVID-19 uh, test. And we are all very proud of what you're doing uh, and how you're participating, contributing to our low positivity rates. And uh, you know, I'm in conversations with uh, other campus leaders who also look at the data on a regular basis. And uh, you know, they're probably pretty envious of uh, the data that I'm looking at now every day because of our success here on uh, this campus compared to other institutions. Uh, your choices as students uh, and decisions at the start of my presidency are interwined uh, and uh, they've contributed to, uh, to the success we've uh, been able to have to date, as I will share with you uh, when I review the data. Like so many of you uh, uh, in my work, I do look at data. <laughs> I know in your classes you're looking at data and uh, you look at it uh, uh, to make decisions, to understand things better and to make decisions. And that's what we're doing here in real time every day, uh, if not every hour. And we have the data to respond to individual cases and also to help develop uh, strategies moving forward and steps we have to take as an institution to maintain uh, that health and safety. So, um, uh, I am going to try to screen share, and it looks like uh, a host disabled participant screen share. And so it looks like I'm ready to do that. And just give me a second. I'm not quite as agile. Could people see the screen? Not yet. Not yet. Uh, I might have to ask, it uh, doesn't look like I'm able to, uh, to, to screen it when I ask for screen sharing. I might ask for Vicky's help uh, to screen it, to share it. It looks like I'm disabled here. So just give me Jeff, a second. Jeff, are you able to um, allow Ross to share a screen, enable him? Uh, I am going to move to uh, the first part of our the data. And you could see the Bryant University uh, uh, COVID uh, tracking dashboard. And you should see on your what you'll see on your screen, I believe on your left-hand column, the total number of tests performed to date. So we've been testing for uh, four weeks now since orientation and three weeks of uh, classes, so four weeks. We have a full campus uh, population of approximately uh, 4,000, a little more than 4,000 include faculty and staff. So four times uh, we've tested the full population and that adds up to over 16,000 tests uh, performed. The total number of positive cases out of over, you know, close to 17,000 cases is uh, uh, 17. And there you see the test positivity rate. The next um, uh, uh, thing you see below the 17 uh, that is in red is the positivity test rate at 0.1. That's one tenth of one percent. Very low positivity test rate. Uh, most states across the country are in the U.S. is about a five percent uh, positivity test rate. Uh, a 0.5 percent, which is five times higher than our positivity test rate, is considered a good test rate. So we're well below that. Uh, you see that the total number of invalid tests 
are below 50, that's a very low percentage. So when uh, you and everybody else are taking uh, those tests by yourself, you know, being uh, watched and being uh, assisted, but you're self-administering it, you're being very effective. Uh, and that's uh, very good in making sure that we have good test results. And so you see that that's the cumulative, the total test, a little under 17,000. And then the test positivity rate of point one is very low and very positive. Uh, and we've only had the 17 cases out of those large number of tests. Then you see those are the aggregate. And then if going below uh, along the same uh, uh, left-hand side, you see that the uh, test, total tests over the past week have been uh, about 3,600. And that's from September 4th till September 10th. And we've had six uh, positive tests. And that's a 0.13%. So very close to that 0.1% positivity rate. And so if you look over, move your eye to the right, the positivity test rate uh, chart with a uh, percentage positive uh, over time, since we started testing uh, in uh, uh, August 21st till the current time. And that's the seven day moving average. And the reason why we do a seven day moving average is we test full population tests over that seven day period. We don't do a full population test every day. We do that over a seven day period. So if you want to get a true sense for our campus and the, uh, the uh, uh, health and safety of our campus, you look across that seven day moving average and it's a moving average because you want to be able to look at that every day. So this data, this full data on this worksheet, I, we look at every day. So we see what were the test results uh, uh, overall and what, are they have, what they have been most recently. And you can see that tab, test data by date, we get the test results for every day. And I get them, uh, uh, as Inga and Glenn and Michelle know, we get them about midnight sometimes. And we're looking at them or early in the morning. And then we use that to understand. We have to follow up with the, the, with the individuals that test positive. We have to follow up, make sure that they are uh, uh, informed and then they're uh, isolated and that any contacts they have uh, that have been identified in contact tracing, that those individuals are quarantined because they're at risk. And then we see if there's an outbreak, we have to put in place some other measures to make sure that people are not at risk for um, uh, contracting the COVID virus. Other information that we look at we want to see if we want to do extra testing on those at high risk. We want to see who of those positive cases, who are those positive uh, testers uh, and get the COVID uh, virus. And you can see uh, the first graphic, uh, it's described as category. And you have uh, Brian staff, commuter student, contractor, for example, our uh, contractor food services, uh, whether the employee is part-time, whether the employee is a faculty member, is it a resident student? Is it a resident student athlete? So you can see that uh, the majority of cases are students. And among students, uh, there is uh, a strong likelihood that they're going to be a, a resident student. And that among resident students, uh, the student athletes uh, a relatively high number, uh, and that we also have commuter students who have contracted the coronavirus. And um, looking a little lower, you see that uh, uh, male and female breakdown, that the tendency we have had more males on campus uh, with the coronavirus positive than females. Back up, we look at the exposure site and we see exposure site. A lot of the original vulnerabilities and contraction of uh, the coronavirus took place off campus. 
So even among residential students who get the virus, there's a high likelihood that they didn't get the coronavirus on campus. It's when they went off campus that they got exposed to COVID-19. So that's why we're asking students to limit their activity off campus. If you stay on campus, mask, socially distance, follow safe practices, you're less, much less likely to get the coronavirus than if you go off campus and engage in some contact with outsiders and have a lot of outside contact. As far as the case status, uh, you could see that there are uh, more uh, 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 resolved cases than current cases. So when we gave you the total figures on this first page of 17 total number of positive uh, tests, a good enough per high percentage of those uh, or a high number of those uh, are no longer active. They're no longer uh, with COVID and they're not part of the vulnerable population. So that's a little bit how we use the data on a regular basis. And it's a, it's a use of data in real time. Uh, and we are all in this together. Uh, and this is our data. And we know that the students are contributing very much to these low positivity test rates. And the data really speaks volumes about the character of Bryan students and the Bryan community and reflects that we're following public health guidelines. And I also wanted to share with you why we're reporting the seven day moving average because it, it truly reflects the full population and we report on it every uh, Friday but we're tracking that every day to make decisions. So with that said, uh, I hope we could keep this going. I really do. And I'm gonna um, uh, take off uh, the uh, uh, not screen share here, if I'm able to do that. Uh, and um, let's see, I might not take the time to do that now. I'll just keep this up on the screen for now, but um, you have the data. And I just want to emphasize that we're all in this together. And I think we could continue this if you all stay really careful and, and follow the practices and protocol. Uh, I know there's some things that you're giving up, uh, uh, but we're going to provide some special learning opportunities for you in the weeks ahead. We're planned a speaker series that Provost Salmacy is leading. And we're going to have some announcement around that. I don't know if you're going to announce any of that today, Glenn, but uh, there's going to be some exciting announcements about that uh, speaker series that I think you'll be excited about. And I know that it's hard that we can't enjoy our traditional football games and homecoming, uh, but to recognize everyone's hard work, especially in the classroom so far, we are going to mark uh, our accomplishments uh, with some celebrations. And we're going to do that the first weekend in October, which is the traditional homecoming uh, weekend. And I'm appointing a committee that will work uh, most closely, I think, with Inga's team uh, to develop uh, the plans for that weekend, the traditional homecoming weekend. That will be a little different this year, but we think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, for example, you may have seen the new scoreboard going up at the, uh, uh, at the football stadium, uh, and it's soon uh, ready. And uh, First thing that it's gonna highlight are gonna be some uh, outdoor movies. And we're gonna ask for your input as to what movies you wanna see on a beautiful fall evening on the screen, on the new scoreboard screen. And uh, we hope to show that uh, the week of September 28th, those movies and outside on a beautiful uh, fall evening that you could all enjoy. And it's, it's a little different, uh, but uh, we're looking forward to uh, keeping this thing going and working with you closely and your suggestions as to how to ensure that we keep this uh, campus safe and healthy and also how we could make this campus uh, really uh, enjoyable for you as much as possible within our constraints given the COVID virus. Uh, what kind of activities beyond uh, speaker series with interesting speakers, beyond movies of your, of your interest that we show? Uh, so October We'll have some uh, uh, early October, some celebrations uh, if we, as we get there. 
and uh, in a safe way and a fun way. And then suggestions for the next milestone uh, that we get to is, and let's keep these, uh, uh, this campus uh, safe and healthy. And thank you so much for, for what you're doing. And uh, I hope my sharing the data and thought process uh, was interesting to you and helpful for you to understand what we're doing from a management leadership uh, perspective to keep this campus safe. So thank you. And uh, thank you for joining uh, this call. Inga, thank you, I think it's over to you, or is it Michelle? Yes, um, thank you, President Gattel. Let me um, uh, toss it over to our Vice President for Student Affairs and Dean of Students, Dr. Inga Lise Amir. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Ross. Hey, Bulldogs, good to be here with you. So when I was asked to reflect uh, at this meeting, the question was, what are we doing really well and what are some of the areas we need to stay vigilant to improve? So let me do a little reflection and then talk about some of the areas that are going well and where we could uh, go a little bit farther. So first of all, I'm so proud of the Bryant community so far, using the health checker every day, getting tested without reminders, uh, wearing masks, social distancing, washing your hands, coming on campus prior to 10 o'clock. Um, you should look at the mirror tonight and tell yourselves that you're one of the young leaders of the United States and you're helping your campus to stay safe and helping everyone that's here get a wonderful education as close to a regular residential college with strong academics and strong faculty as you can. And uh, that's what gets me going on these long days and some of the hard news we hear every day on the news. And uh, I think you should be so proud of yourselves. And um, I just want to share that research in education, economics, sociology, psychology, and biology shows us that as human beings, it's connections that help us to stay in good health, learn better, and grow. And you're enabling by the work you're all doing by following the health guidelines that um, we've set aside uh, to uh, run the campus, really, you're helping all of your colleagues and your peers um, become their best selves. And I just think that's very exciting. I know you're very much an inspiration to me every day. Um, I just want to say that uh, shout out, uh, and I hope you'll help me as we go through the semester, to the student affairs teams that are running the testing center, the contact tracing, the um, the quarantine and isolation spaces, residential life, security on campus, the CDI, the Amica Center, and all of student engagement. We spent a lot of time along with my colleagues on this call and uh, all our colleagues across Bryant getting ready for this. And I'm very proud of the work we're doing. And I think part of life and being a leader is when you see something working well, you acknowledge the people that, um, as Ross did, that are doing the hard work to get us there. So what can we do better? So all you're going to hear from me in the next two months is flu shots, flu shots, flu shots, flu shots, flu shots. I want you to get a flu shot. Um, it will really help you not have to go into isolation if you have the flu, which then we have to assume could be COVID until we get you tested. So um, we will be having flu clinics, which will be widely advertised, but we don't have our uh, vaccines yet. No, no, no colleges do yet in Rhode Island, but you can take your weekend and plan a little outing with your friends to go to Walgreens, CVS, or some other place fun and get your flu shots. So please do that. And also your responsibilities as healthy citizens in this pandemic, please encourage your family and close friends to also get um, flu shots as much as you can. The other thing that um, I hope you'll all start working on is the Amica Center has moved all of our career fairs virtually. Uh, the university put a good investment into vendors so that we could give you the same opportunities, especially you seniors out there, listen to me, we're still gonna help you find something meaningful and powerful to do after graduation. So we had our first virtual career fair uh, Thursday, went very well on accounting. We will be doing them like we've always done them. They're just virtual and we need you to uh, register ahead of time because it's all computerized 
and to post your resumes. I don't want you to be afraid. We're still using the same employees and they want to meet you. And frankly, this is a sign of the future. So you'll be doing a lot of the work in the next five to eight years in your lives virtually in your professional lives. So I just really want you to um, take advantage of that. Third, please take advantage of all the campus activities. Uh, we're very excited. Glenn and I have been working on this art barn. Glenn, before I even got here, sorry, Provost Macy. And uh, we're having a event all day on Saturday. We can't do it inside. You can look at the art barn and how beautiful it is inside. Uh, we can only do 15 people in there, but we are having a lot of great events outside. And uh, I'm just very excited about this, uh, this nod to the arts here at Bryant, which you all know is a big uh, goal of mine. And so I'm very excited. So please take advantage of all of our numerous activities. What else can you do? You can take care of yourselves. Um, there's a lot of stress we're seeing, to be frank, a lot of increased uh, mental health stress around COVID. I get it. It's very stressful for all of us in each generation. So I just want you to know counseling's there. The gym is there. Take a nice long walk. We've got um, good healthy food for you to eat. Um, and uh, the interfaith center's there for any kind of reflection you want to have. For those of you that are interested, we start up all our religious services again this Sunday, uh, this Friday, and we go forward, and I'm very excited about that. The, the best thing you can do for yourselves as you face these very serious global challenges is take care of yourself, and that's one of the best things you can learn as you leave Brian someday and go into the real world. We're actually right in the middle of the real world right now and Brian every day. But um, please take care of yourselves and use the resources we have here. And then of course, as I said to all the students at the townhouses a couple weeks ago, this is an amazing opportunity for you to explore our faculty and all the amazing intellectual opportunities to take these next 62 days and say, I'm gonna learn new things and go places I haven't gone. COVID provides us the opportunity to do things a little bit differently. And as I'm always saying to you, to not let this disease stop us, but to keep on moving forward as an intellectual community and a vibrant, thoughtful, diverse community as well. Thank you, Michelle, for this opportunity to talk to students. Thank you, Dr. Amir, very much. I'm going to now turn it over um, to our uh, Provost, uh, Provost Lamacy. Thank you, Vice President Cloutier, and uh, thank you, President Gattel and Vice President Amir. Uh, and students, it's great to have everybody here. It's wonderful. Um, on a Friday, or really a Thursday, it feels like a Thursday to me. I'm not sure why. I'm sure a lot of you are saying, gosh, Glenn, why are we doing this on a Saturday? We have five Saturdays. We had Labor Day. You were great on Labor Day and on Columbus Day, but we're going to do this we're going to get you safe and get you out of here. One of the items that President Cattell has given us as a charge from the outset is safety first. And that's why we're doing it. It's about you and getting you home safely and making sure we have this environment. And you've been great. We've met with Ian. I know Ian's on the call. Hello, President Whitehead. And he's worked with Inga's team and we're, excuse me, Vice President Amir's team and worked really to make this work. I mean, this is hard. We're not unaware of this is a different atmosphere you're in. This is uh, uh, unusual circumstances and as the boss likes to say unprecedented and it is uh, it hasn't been anything like this in a hundred years so we really wanted to say thank you and keep charging uh from a from our perspective on wearing the masks on trying to look out for each other not punishing each other not creating a culture of anger but actually one that we're going to get through this the great bryant way of doing things is we get together we bond together and we find a way to move the institution forward and we are really proud of you right now and your leadership and what all of you are doing that are on this call. What you're doing is making sure we can get out of here in 66 days, would be the 66 days until our last day of class, the 16th. I like to say 63 days and Elizabeth O'Neill, Ms. O'Neill, if you know her, gets mad. I say that because that day is Friday the 13th. But I just think it sounds more ominous to say we're going to get you. We'll finish classes on Friday the 13th. So um, we're really proud of you. We ask you to keep it up. When you're in classrooms, I would ask you amongst yourselves, make sure you're six feet apart. It's easy to kind of get closer. I've walked around and, and I see all of you. You see me in classrooms. Some of you see me walk into classrooms. 
you're a little bit, I, I'd always be conscious of keeping that six foot distancing. You have your masks on, it's terrific. I, you know, I, I look out my window all the time, I'm looking by right now, I see the masks on everybody and I'm so proud of you. But I do think I've watched, be careful of sliding close to where a collaborative group, collaborative uh, institution, getting too close to one another can create problems. So just try to keep in mind that six foot, sit on the end of the tables or on the other, on the ends if you can, or grab another table. I've seen some places where the tables are open. So just, I'd ask you to do that from your provost perspective. Before I continue, I do want to echo what uh, President Cattell mentioned. Today is a solemn day. Today is a solemn day. And um, uh, again, Brian does it the right way. As soon as that sunrise came up, the flag was at half mast. This is a solemn day, not just for the United States, but for the world. But we've moved, and one of the things that I will never forget, which we need a little bit now and during the next several months, I would suggest we need it, is to be together. That we are Americans together. We are one world together. We are one human race together. And when we start looking at things uh, at each other in a negative fashion, things don't go well. I will never forget the American spirit after the attacks of 9-11 of seeing Democrats, Republicans, all races, all creeds, getting together and coming together to say we will not allow evil to take our society away from us. And I, I hope I see that sort of spirit again here in the United States. And that was one I'll never forget on the steps of the Capitol, Republicans and Democrats, independents getting together and singing the Star Spangled Banner on the steps of the Capitol. And I won't forget that. So I'd ask you all uh, to just take a moment today and pause and reflect on the loss of life that day and the way it changed our world. Um, you have just been born or not been born, but your parents will tell you and your older brothers and sisters will. It changed us. So, um, as I said, well, uh, our goal, you know, the semester is different. You've been back. I love seeing all of you together. We'll be done. Last day of classes is, is November 24th. So, excuse me, of finals is November 24th. So, you will have your in-person finals. If we keep going in this direction, we'll have the classes done and all finals done by November 24th. And, and that is something that we're really striving to do in your efforts supporting that are tremendous, so we thank you. I did want to let you know two bits of info that you're going to want me to give you is our winter sessions are finalized for both winter session one and winter session two in terms of the classes. I am finalizing them. I've got a few little pokes to it before we publish it and give it to Ms. Hayward, who's on the call, and uh, Ms. McClacken, the registrar. But I've got to put in, plug in some uh, missing points and play around with it and show it to the boss before we, we uh, Put it out there but uh we're in good shape with both courses in the arts and sciences and the first time in about a decade the college of business so we're going to have courses both in winter session one and winter session two thanks to my wonderful deans dean samter and dean anna Rajula, and all of the faculty we now have courses in both colleges both in winter session one and winter session two they will be all remote um, they'll be remote for this period. We'll have them remote for uh, for this time frame. Uh, some of you have asked me, hey, Glenn, will we do this in the future? Is this something we're going to be doing later on next year, uh, the summer? Will we be remote then? You know, we'll have to see and wait and see. Right now, we're definitely all remote for winter session one and winter session two. And, uh, I, you know, classes from biology to introduction of film studies to um, uh, accounting 203, to microeconomic principles. I'm not sure if President Cattell's teaching that one. I think he's going to take a pass, but he knows more about that than anybody uh, on this call. I can tell you there's certainly more than me. But we have all the different areas for you to, to take uh, on, on both, both areas to do. So that'll be wonderful. And we're finalizing the schedule for the spring. Um, I'm working closely with Vice President Amir and, and uh, uh, President Cattell about what's best. And we have to prepare as if things won't change, folks, no matter what happens. We have to prepare anything you'll need learn here. As a leader, you have to prepare for the worst case scenario, not the best case, not the rosy scenario. And we're, we're taking a look at everything for next semester to make sure that we're prepared. And we'll be publishing the schedule sometime, hopefully, in the next week. But we have to just tweak a few things and, and finalize those. So I wanted to get those tidbits out. The third one President Cattell mentioned is just simply uh, we're going to have an opportunity for some programming, which, you know, Vice President Amir's team is doing a great job. We've got a, a bunch of different activities going on to have you have fun here on our campus and encourage that sort of fun. We also have some great ed academic programs is going as well. We have one on the 16th on the pandemic, uh, uh, moderated by Dr. Hokeness, uh, uh, introduced by President Cattell. And we're kicking off this fall series that many of you know Dr. Tabaldi has coordinated these series that he did in the spring 
and now he's doing a series on the pandemic, different aspects of how the pandemic impacts different disciplines and professions, from economics to global affairs to finance to actual um, you know, the actual medical side, you know, what, what we're looking at. And uh, the medical side will be represented. I know Dr. Amrine's on this call. He'll be on the panel and several other, other distinguished members of the medical community will be there on uh, the 16th. There's a whole flood of information coming out from our public affairs office shortly in the next, uh, on Monday and Tuesday to remind you, but it's Wednesday evening. I think it's at seven o'clock, but uh, be, be looking forward to that uh, as well. And then we have our day of, 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 of remembrance, if you will, a day of thinking, a day to reflect on diversity inclusion that Vice President Martins is putting on. And we're finalizing the day on that. And that'll be another tremendous opportunity for us to, uh, to gather and reflect on, on different activities and the way, like I said, of us coming together, which is what we have to always think about, as a, especially as an institution of higher learning and one, as we like to call it, in the academy, where we appreciate all sides. Intellectual growth is what we're here to do. And I, I, I look forward to having those conversations with all of you to grow and learn from each other, which is at the end of the day what it's all about. So I'm sorry for rushing through this and being quick, but a lot of info in a short period, but it's my pleasure uh, as always to uh, work with you all. And it's just been tremendous seeing all of you here and bringing this campus back to life. And as I said, I don't like to make it sound like it's a bad thing, it's a good thing. Together, we're going to keep you here for those 66 days if we all work together. And again, I'm very, very proud of each and every one of you. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Provost Macy. So um, now we're going to transition to the question and answer portion of um, today's uh, program. And our first question is for Vice President Amir. I know you talked a little bit about um, the flu shots, um, flu shots, flu shots, flu shots. Um, I will get mine, I promise. Um, but, what That's all is <laughs> <laughs> but what is health services planning for flu season this year in terms of will they be able to get flu shots in um, health services? When they arrive. Thanks. Great question. We're planning flu clinics uh, with two partnerships, one a wellness agency and one CVS. Um, those dates uh, will begin in October, which is when we have access to the vaccines. Uh, and one of the things we're doing this year is the flu um, will have the days posted for all of you. Uh, and I believe human resources is doing for staff and faculty because we don't want to forget uh, that one of the things that has made us successful at Bryant this year is we're testing everyone. We're taking care of everyone at Bryant. Uh, so uh, we'll be holding those clinics in the same space that you do your uh, weekly uh, COVID testing. So it will be really easy to get a flu shot. So more details will be coming about that. Thank you, Vice President Amir. Um, the next question is for President Gattel. Um, what circumstances would cause Bryant to suspend residential living and classes on site this fall? And how many positive cases does there have to be for students to be sent home? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a question that uh, we contemplate that we're strategizing over. And there's uh, different elements uh, to answering that question. Uh, one is to, you know, I showed the number of active cases, so we wouldn't be focused on the total cases. And there was a question about does that 17, that uh, number 17 figure of cases go back to the first week in classes? It actually goes back to the first week of testing, uh, which is uh, before the first week in classes uh, in late August, as I showed on that uh, graphic. But we would look at the number of uh, active cases uh, and uh, its trend, its recent trend. Uh, is the moving average going up and how much is it going up? How does it compare with the U.S. average overall? How does it compare with uh, that 5% which uh, has been looked at as kind of a, uh, a good figure for, for states and it'll probably be a little lower than that for higher education institutions. And then we'd have to look at uh, our capacity to isolate and quarantine students. Uh, uh, and uh, we're working on uh, different strategies to see if uh, we had to uh, uh, can we increase our current capacity? Right now, Inge, if I'm correct, uh, uh, we're not, you know, we're, we're not close to being at capacity. We have a lot of extra capacity and we have ways to ramp up that, that capacity. Is that correct. true? Yeah. So those are some of the things we look at and we'd also <clears throat> have to talk to the Rhode Island Department of Health, who we talk to on a regular basis. And uh, one thing to assure the students here is uh, 
we would be communicating uh, with, you know, be communicating about the, any concerns we had and things we were contemplating. And then we are getting some uh, 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 commentary from the uh, CDC, uh, the Center for Disease Control on a federal level with Dr. Fauci, that it could be safer for, for us to, uh, to keep the students here uh, and uh, have a more, uh, 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 I should say, a less active campus, uh, more remote instruction, uh, but keep students here rather than have them go back into their communities. Uh, so there's going to be different strategies. Uh, what I can guarantee you will be based upon the numbers, the data, our capacity, our discussions with Rhode Island Department of Health, uh, and that uh, we would be communicating in real time based on real, you know, up-to-date data, which I shared with the students uh, on that issue. So I hope, Michelle, is that uh, anything else you might want to add or Glenn to that? Um, nope. I think you had it all. Glenn, anything for you? I think that's perfect. That's uh, exactly right. It's, it's going to be contingent on the status of the virus. Everything. Okay. Um, a follow up for you, um, President Gattel, if we have to go back to an online only education, can families expect to see refunds on room and board and on tuition? No, like I said, it's a dynamic situation. We'd be listening to uh, to our experts uh, inside the campus and outside the campus. Uh, Dr. Fauci, I mentioned, uh, said, you know, if we had to go remote, we would uh, still keep, uh, you know, there is a possibility would uh, keep students on campus. And that way uh, we could, uh, let's say uh, uh, the case was that uh, we had a, a, a temporary uh, kick up in the uh, uh, positivity test rate. But then by going remote for a, a short period of time, we we're able to uh, get back down to a, a stable low level and then go back uh, uh, to uh, in-class instruction. We wouldn't have to want students to go home and then have to come back. So other institutions, many, many institutions across the country who have uh, had high incidence now, much, much higher, talking about thousands in the thousands of cases that kept students on campus, gone remote, and are looking to lower their, their rates and some of, of uh, positivity and some have reopened now as far as the uh, in-class instruction. So with that, uh, you know, we wouldn't, there wouldn't be any change to, uh, to tuition or to room and board because students would still be here and that we'd have full, uh, no interruption in, in instruction and the quality of instruction. Uh, Glenn and his team are guaranteed, you know, committed to that, Inga and her team are committed to making sure that a residential experience could be as good as possible, but it's contingent what we do and what we allow. Uh, it's contingent on the state of the positivity test rates on campus, and we're monitoring that on a daily basis. Thank you. Yeah. Um, this next question is for Vice President Amir. What does DPS do to ensure that we are following the campus visitor policy and guests aren't staying overnight when the vis when they visit residential students thank you great questions um first uh we have one uh point of entry on our campus which we're very fortunate to have that really helps us maintain safety and health on the campus so uh dps um has different functions depending on the day or time um, if it's in the evening guests are not allowed uh, to come on campus uh, in the evening. So for the daytime, a guest must fill out the health checker app and answer some questions and then uh, let DPS know who they're visiting and so forth and so on. All the residence halls are locked except to students who live there. So you can visit with a resident, but you cannot visit in the residence hall. And we have an extensive residential life staff and um, they are the ones that keep track uh, in the, residence halls when they see someone that shouldn't be there just to let everybody know we have not had very many problems with this at all our students I, i'm just going to keep saying this until it isn't true anymore but i think it will be until uh friday the 13th i like that glenn a lot um we have not had a lot of problems with that students are taking the health and responsibility of this campus incredibly safe uh, incredibly seriously as our staff and faculty and uh, so it's been really good, but that's how we regulate um, and keep track of visitors. Now we do have also another process for 
people who are doing work on campus. You know, we're still a vibrant facility. And sometimes we need work off campus contractors and they do the health checker and answer a series of questions too. So I believe like the word is out there that if you're coming to the Bryant campus, one, you need to have a really good reason to be here. And two, you need to make sure that you're feeling well. Thank you. Another question for you, Dr. Amir. If we are still on campus or when we are still on campus, when the temperature is cold or low outside, yes. what changes will be made to the Salmo tent? Yes, excellent question. Um, we're looking at the possibility of heat lamps right now, but it's a tent. So, you know, I just wanna make sure everything's okay with safety. Um, I am still advocating for a grab and go for Salmo. We have a meeting tomorrow, uh, excuse me, this afternoon with Sodexo. Uh, uh, student government has also been working very hard on that. And I'm hoping that that will enable people to take hot food back to their room. But it's a good question and we're working on it. If people, students have suggestions like always, write into my inbox in my, um, in my email, uh, any suggestions about how to deal with the colder weather. However, I'm looking forward to seeing all of us in our thermal underwear and our heavy coats and hats, still taking advantage of the outside, even in November in the Scandinavian countries, um, they are outside right up through February. So I think we could model that same kind of behavior. <laughs> Thank you. This question is for Provost Solmacy. What is the spring semester going to look like in terms of course selection and class times? I'm not really 100% certain how I follow that last answer, the last response. I'm going to give it a whirl. I, uh, um, thank you, uh, Michelle. I think uh, what we're talking about essentially is a spring semester not very different uh, from what we have now. We have to plan as if that there is the virus is still out there. Um, we're finalizing what we're going to do and how we're going to proceed. And you should hear something in the next week, but trust me, this has been something from the registrar, the deans, the president, the vice president of student affairs, and the vice president for enrollment management have all been involved in these things in the director of athletics, the whole cabinet, trying to figure out what works best um, because this is important to you, important to us, but we have to uh, make sure we can still do what we did best. And I would say so far, we're hoping to be able to really celebrate this in November, but right now we're doing it. We're keeping the academic excellence, moving forward with our new modes of pedagogy to deliver instruction, but at the same time, keeping it safe and keeping the campus safe. And so we have to be able to do that. Um, so we're waiting to see, but we'll have a draft schedule out in the next week or two, uh, depending on how quickly I can resolve a couple of minor tweaks, which shouldn't be that long, but you never know. And I'm making sure that my deans and department chairs are on board uh, with this. And our, we have actually have a calendar committee that will uh, uh, be working with me on this. So it's very, very important to make sure everyone is uh, on board. But I'm, I'm very excited about it. I'm happy about it. We will end. Uh, we have, as you know, we have, we will end in May one way or the other because we have two commencements scheduled uh, for uh, May uh, 20, uh, 20th and 21st. So we have to know that... Uh, those are happening. We're having the class of 20 and the class of 21's commencement. And I could tell you, I know President Gattel and Vice President Amir and, and uh, Vice President Kluder and I and the whole cabinet are looking forward to that. And uh, and your faculty are. Um, so I, I think that's where we're at. We're looking forward to it, Michelle. We've got to finalize some things, but we should be thinking about similar, some tweaks, but depending on, it's, it's as uh, President Gattel said, it's really a dynamic situation and fluid. We have to be able to respond depending on the circumstances. The only other thing I wanted to throw in there, it's just a little uh, red herring, but a sidebar, is to thank uh, the folks in Res Life for what they've done for our medical team and to Jay Amrine. If any of you don't know the head of the PA program, he, he's been working tirelessly to get info to all of us and uh, helping out, supporting Vice President Amir and her analysis of the testing, of working, getting info to President Gattel sometimes at 5.30 in the morning, sometimes just, but keeping us up. Uh, we get emails from Jay at 1.30 in the morning. So if you see him, he's the head of the PA program. You probably know him, he's a pretty loud fella, um, but just uh, throw him a shout out and say thank you. Him and the Res Life folks, I know you're with those folks, students, but it's never too bad just to say thank you. It goes a long way 
from your days when you were growing up of please and thank you, a simple thank you goes a long way to those folks because we're thanking you right now. And I know if you thank them, they'll be pretty appreciative. So that's um, it, Michelle. Glenn, I just want to echo thanking Jay for all the support of the work in student affairs and making our work uh, possible in this pandemic. Thank you, Jay. Uh, next question is for um, Vice President Amir. What is the spring semester going to look like in terms of move-in and access to on-campus testing? Great question. Spring semester is going to be awesome, even awesomer than the first semester has been. Um, I don't have a detailed move-in date, but you will need to make an appointment and we will need to practice social distancing but we will send all of that out to you and your families and we will have balloons, music, and fun. I can promise that. Um, <laughs> Provost Macy is working on finalizing the calendar and getting uh, input and, and we'll be sending that out soon. Uh, in, test, in terms of testing, um, I assume we'll continue testing uh, and uh, we've learned a tremendous amount. I was over there today uh, the longest wait we've had this week is four minutes. I think that's amazing. Uh, the testing staff under Paul Yolucci has been extraordinary. So I assume that we'll continue and learn uh, even more. I wanted to say one thing about this team of people on this call that I get to work with every day. We check in regularly. So if we think there needs to be a change in the Health Checker app, we make a change. If we think there needs to be a change at Cumberland, we make a change. Um, I'm just very proud of how nimble the entire Bryant University campus has been. And I just want to say that in your classes and in IDEA program and all the places where you learn the importance of innovation, um, we're really experiencing that every day at Bryant and it's pretty cool. Thank you, Vice President Amir. And this question is for President Gattel. How many positive cases do we have as of today, the 11th, and is there any chance that statistics can get updated more frequently than once a week? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I gave you what you saw was our dashboard, uh, you know, what I presented. So those uh, 17 uh, cases uh, to date, and that's since the end of August when we started testing, like around August 21st till uh, uh, Wednesday, the end of the day, Wednesday, full test uh, results Wednesday. We'll get the updates for yesterday's testing soon. Uh, and then uh, later today, we'll give the seven day moving average, uh, which is that we just, that I highlighted. Uh, you know, the seven day moving average is what we're gonna focus on because uh, what I said before, that's the full population that's most relevant. But that is updated every day. Uh, and it doesn't change that much. It hasn't changed that much for us now. So, uh, you know, we, we're going to manage that data and we're going to act on it on a daily basis. Uh, uh, given that, uh, you know, there are days that uh, we're going to see uh, perhaps small clusters of cases uh, and we're going to analyze those, do detailed contact tracing, uh, which is really important because uh, that confidential uh, contact tracing, you want to reflect, you know, what, what which is one case that's isolated is very different than a case that's a mini cluster or a case that's a, ma a maximum, uh, a large cluster. So uh, depending upon, uh, you know, is a person really alone and gets uh, the virus because they, they did something outside and then came in but don't have many contacts on campus. So we don't have to worry about that as much as if uh, somebody, you know, was at a, uh, a local establishment uh, and came into contact with a lot of people, including a lot of Brian people, and then they all came back and three of them tested positive, but then they had, uh, you know, many contacts on Brian campus. And, but, you know, so we have to go through the full contact uh, tracing to understand if uh, a case is of high concern or not. So there's a lot of detailed follow-up to each report, and we don't want people to underreact, and we don't want people to overreact. And uh, if uh, we feel at a certain time that uh, more frequent uh, uh, data reporting would be helpful, we'll do that. But the seven day moving average, and since we're testing about a thousand people every weekday, we have a lot of information. I just shared with you my, our most current information. So we're, we're gonna be transparent, but we don't wanna flood everybody with all this data and get people concerned that there's a, one day we might have more 
uh, we might have some positives that could concern some people when you look at the full tracing of it and understand that in the context of our trends and most recent data around that particular day. So we're managing that. We're highly responsible for it uh, and uh, we'll adjust over time. Uh, so that's, uh, that's, how, that's the answer, Michelle, and I hope that's, uh, that, that's sufficient. Thank you. And I think this um, question is for all of our panelists. And um, I'd like to start with you, President Cattell. Given the low number of positive cases, is there any chance that the current restrictions could be lessened? Wow, that's an interesting question. Uh, you know, I actually, we're doing so well, you know, that, uh, and like Inga and others have said, you know, it's working, it's working. You know, the masking, the social distancing, you know, trying to stay on campus is working. Uh, we want to get to uh, that magic date, uh, whether it's uh, November 24th or November 13th as emerged as a, uh, as a date. Uh, uh, so we, we want to be, uh, be diligent. Uh, as we all know, there are many states in the country where they relaxed uh, some of the restrictions. And the next thing they knew, they were big jump up in cases and deaths. And we do not want to have that happen here. I know I had an interesting experience uh, today. I was wearing my mask and uh, you know I was around campus. Uh, and then I went into privacy, my office closed the door. Normally when I get to work, uh, you know, working on the computer, I take off my mask just because nobody else is here and I'm working on my own and the doors closed. And I noticed that I sat here for the full period of time, it was about over an hour, with my mask on. I didn't even notice it. So I think after a while, you just get so used to it. It's not so bad, you know? I kind of laughed at myself and said, you know, that's silly, why did I keep the mask? I said, better to be careful, better to be careful than to be sorry, not just sorry for yourself, but also because you could have uh, caused problems for other people and made it less likely that we're gonna make it to that magic date. So I'd say, you know, we're going to try to keep this thing going and we're going to, you know, give you rewards and congratulate you. And when we hit certain milestones, uh, you know, and uh, I'd, I'd love to say, you know, we're going to come back in the spring and there's some vaccine out there and we're over this virus and back to normalcy. I'd love to do that. But at this point in time, I don't see we're close to that, Michelle. Right. Yeah. Uh, Provost Salmacy or Vice President Amir, do you have anything to add? I just want to say that um, for me, every COVID day is about reflections. I don't really see these as restrictions, and I agree strongly with President Cattell. I see these as community standards for helping us uh, keep all of ourselves and our families healthy and safe. And um, I'm really proud again, as we all are on the panel, that everyone has stepped up to the plate. I think we can make these little concessions as we work to create uh, and keep stable our residential campus. Thanks, Michelle. You're welcome. How about Phil Macy, anything or? Just I'd ask you all to stay the course. Stay the course, we're making it work. And uh, I have a vested interest because at least uh, President Gattel, uh, Vice President Amir and I do, because we don't want you to leave right away. We want you to stay and enjoy us. The campus gets very quiet. When you all left in March, my family and I were the only ones on campus. It was quiet, and, and we have a vested interest in keeping this alive. It's so wonderful to have you back on the campus. You have no idea. I've told some of you this, but I'm not kidding. This is just wonderful having the campus back to life. It's not 100% the way we all want it, but gosh, we're making the best of it, and that's the Bryant way. We're going to make the best of a bad situation and come out stronger in the spring, and that's where we have to operate. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you, and, and thank you all for joining us this afternoon. I hope you found the conversation both helpful and informative. Even though things are looking a little different this fall, we're trying to get through this together and making it a meaningful leadership experience. And so President Gattel, is there anything else you'd like to add before we close? No, again, I just want to thank the students for uh, you know what they're doing, their cooperation, and uh, sort of echo what uh, Glenn and others have said. We want to keep you here, you know, this is, uh, you know, the way we want it uh, on this campus. So uh, just keep keep it, uh, keep on doing what you've been doing and encourage others to, to follow uh, safe practices. And the only thing I would add, Michelle, is uh, we want to hear from you. Uh, I want to hear from you. Uh, any suggestions to make campus life uh, more enjoyable for you, to make campus life uh, safe and healthy? Your suggestions are really important. We want to listen and learn from you. This is 
I think Inga, you, you emphasize, this is a learning moment, reflection and learning moment. So please uh, share your thoughts, share your ideas, suggestions, and uh, we're all in this together. So go Bulldogs and be strong.